Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the next edition of our podcast, AAA Build. Uh, today, we want to talk about uh, expectations and the uh, the actual process involved in a bathroom renovation, what to expect, and uh, you know how the process should follow. So after the initial contact uh, made to us, we would organise a uh, time to come around and do a measure and, and site inspection of your particular job, go through the particulars of the job, what it is that you're looking for, what the end result that you're looking for, um, and then we would have discussions in, in, in regards to your fixtures, your fittings, your tiles, etc. Um, just so we can Get, get a full head of what it is your expectations are and uh, enables us to meet them. Um, so what that process involves is we, we come in and we do a rough sketch of the room space and the locations of the existing fixtures and fittings um, we, and take measurements. Uh, so we've got all the dimensions including the room height. Uh, that's so we can calculate the uh, quantities of tiles and building materials required. Um, once we've done that, we put together a uh, building materials list after which we can schedule your job should you opt to proceed. Now, uh, in terms of the expectations on a job, um, you'll notice on most quotes there is a term called variances. Uh, now, variances are anything which is over and above what is immediately apparent to anybody looking at the job. Um, as to the building requirements. Uh, oftentimes, if you've had long-term leak damage, uh, there will be damage which can't be seen uh, until the rip-out is performed. Uh, that could include things such as wall framing, uh, bottom plates on the wall frames, uh, including subfloor damage, uh, subfloor lining and uh, joist material. Uh, these will obviously become apparent once the rip-out is done. Um, and once that's ascertained, uh, that damage is generally, in most cases, uh, a couple of hours and, and a couple of hundred dollars to fix. Um, so don't let variations scare you. It is very rare that it is such major damage that you're rolling into the thousands to fix it. Um, so that, that, being, that being the case, there are 90% of jobs don't have any damage at all. Um, when the rip-out is done, it also allows us to uh, judge whether the walls are true and plumb, uh, which enables for a Schmidt tiling job. Um, so uh, any walls that are out of plumb and not true, then they are, they are packed out uh, and the walls are made true and, and plumb uh, sufficient enough for a great tiling job. Uh, without that, you end up with a dodgy tiling job and the risk of tiles coming off the wall. So um, that's, that's one area that needs to be addressed. It's not a simple case of taking off the old and bunging new straight onto the old substrate. Um, at least the bottom half of the walls, are re the, the plaster is generally replaced um, just as a necessity for most, most of these jobs. Um, once the rip out is, is done and the, it's, the framing's all been straightened, then generally the plumbers and electricians will come in and rough in any cabling and piping that they need to do, um, after which time the plasterboard is then uh, reaffixed, uh, patched and sanded uh, and prepared for waterproofing. Although the waterproofing itself is a, is a system which requires a that all of the joints and corners are bandaged and sealed first of all, uh, sicker flexed around all of the uh, penetrations in the wall and the floor. Um, and then there is a primer and two coats of waterproofing applied before anything else happens. Once that's done, uh, the job is pretty well ready for tiling. Uh, the tiler then comes in and does his tiling, floors, walls uh, as required. After that, the fit off of your fixtures and fittings occurs and that's the end of the job. Uh, having said that, it's a process in between and there's a lot that goes on in terms of building and, and uh, construction with all the different trades in the meantime. So, but we manage all that process for you. It's not something that you need to concern yourself with. Um, when it comes to uh, expectations on price of jobs, 
uh, you need to consider that uh, most quality jobs, uh, to give you an idea, a rough bathroom of four, four and a half square metres in size, which is your typical bathroom, uh, without fixtures and fittings, the cost of doing a full bathroom renovation is typically around the $23,000 mark. Uh, if you want to include builder's range fixtures and fittings on top of that, then you're probably looking closer to 27,000. Um, now, you know, we're in business to make a profit. We're not in business to go out the door backwards. So uh, that's why we've been around as long as we have. Um, we don't uh, make exorbitant margins. Uh, we have uh, people in our industry are actually charging you know, 10 to $15,000 Eclipsing our prices by at least ten to fifteen thousand dollars, so we're not uh, we're not um, the cheapest tool in the shed, but nor are we the most expensive. Uh, what you get is a quality job with quality trades. Now the trades is another thing. Uh, you must ensure that your builder is licensed and that they are using licensed trades to carry out the, the work involved. That, that they are providing a compliance certificate, which is required under law. Uh, insurance certificate and compliance for waterproofing for electrics and for plumbing uh, so they are uh, the main things uh, if you've got people quoting you fifteen thousand dollars for a bathroom then there's a number of things happening they're either not licensed using unlicensed trades not providing insurance and not providing your certificates of compliance this day and age, uh, particularly in the last two years, where we've had exorbitant prices in, in both materials and trades labour costs, uh, to do a bathroom for $15,000 is just uh, ridiculous. Uh, there's no chance you're getting a quality job for that sort of dollars because they're simply not putting the labour into it. Um, so uh, that's just food for thought. Um, sorry. Just reading another message that's come in. Um, yeah. So we had somebody ask about um, you know, following up on the job. So the person quoting your job is the person quoting your job the person that's able to make decisions, or are they just a salesperson selling you the job and then disappearing? Uh, I myself come out and do these quotes personally and I deal with your job right from start to finish. Any queries come straight through me, so the, the, the buck starts and ends with me. Um, there are other people that will communicate along the way, the trades and the uh, site supervisor uh, will be in full communication with you through the whole job. You will know each day who is coming, what time they're coming, and what to expect for the next day's work. So we don't leave you uh, hanging and wondering What's, what's going on, we allow you to be able to plan your day. So uh, communication is absolute key, uh, and that's why we have such a great rapport with our clients and uh, great results from it. Uh, so it's extremely important. We're not just selling you a job and then disappearing and leaving you in the lurch, not knowing what's, what's happening from one day to the next. Uh, our jobs are generally continuous and from start to finish. Uh, there will rarely be a day where we're not on site. Uh, if that happens, you will be informed about it prior and you will know exactly where you're at. Uh, so that's it. Uh, look, that's a, that's a lot of information, but it's important information and things that you should know, things that you possibly aren't being told by people who are quoting your job, but these are things you should insist upon. Um, and if they're not delivering that sort of service, then perhaps you should be looking elsewhere. Alrighty, that's it from me today. I hope that's been informative and um, we'll catch you next time.